And welcome back to The Factor on Censor. Texas homeowners are going through it. A lot of people are being hit with crazy high appraisals. According to experts, those numbers have increased by at least 25%, but I have some outrageous examples. Let's talk about it. Joining me here in studio, property tax consultant Chris Compton and real estate Agent Tia Monteca, glad to have you both here on the Factor on Center. So, Tia, let's start with one of my friends who called me Monday, and this is why we're doing this segment. Mm -hmm. He and his dad own a commercial property. It was valued at two hundred thousand dollars. Got the appraisal this year from the county. Now <laughs> nine hundred thousand. Ran into a doctor in the ER, minor ER. She said her property, residential, was at seven hundred thousand. Now it's at one point two million in uh, appraised value. So how do you even, why are we seeing this? How do you do this? And are these oddities, anomalies that I ran into? Well, it seems to be really uh, on the rampant right now, on the, on the rage because of what happened in the last three years, right? In Texas, it's become one of the largest growing states in the country. The last three years, we've had individuals paying over market uh, over asked for their, for their uh, deals. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're landed, where we are right now. And so. But for those who have like been in their homes forever, it's like, well, I didn't ask for this. And, and I wasn't part of a, a, a sweetheart deal like that, so why am I seeing it? It's comparable sales in their area, in their general area. Maybe the same block, um, two blocks down. It's, it's becoming rampant. That's correct. In all yeah. counties. Yeah. Now, if you get an appraisal like that, Chris, what can you do about it? I mean, do you just have to sit there and take it? No, no, you can file a protest. That, and in the envelope that they send you, it is a protest form inside that envelope. First, real quick, tell us how soon do we need to do it and what's a cutoff? And then we'll get into the rest because time is of essence for a lot of people out there. That's correct. Soon as you get it, you need to look at the value. If it's residential, you'll mark it and appraise value. Most of the appraised values I've been seeing is between fifty and one hundred and fifty thousand under market. But you have until May fifteenth to file that protest. If you don't get it in by May fifteenth, that's going to be your value for the year. Now, some of the notices get mailed out after May fifteenth, though. If you get it in, say June the fifth. Mm -hmm. then you have 30 days to July 5th after you get the notice. Now, should you handle this? Should you appeal this yourself? Or should you rely on an individual like you? And we're not trying to give you business, but <laughs> if, if they told me to go in, I don't know what the hell to do. Right. You know? Right. right. Uh, most taxpayers, they can just walk in there and they don't have anything with them. You hire somebody like me, I have more than enough information that I could take to the appraisal district. And I worked there for 14 years. So I know what to take in there to try to at least get you a comparable value that you would be happy with. And when you talk about individuals like yourself representing people to get that appraised value down, uh, what's the success rate? Is it like 50% on the average, 80%, 70%? Well, most of the ones I've done, I'm usually between 75 and 80%. And most of those I do, I take them straight to the board. And they came out a few years back with a, what they called binding arbitration. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't get the value that you want in the board for residential homesteads, you can file arbitration. It's for $500 you put up, but the appraisal district has to put up $500 also. And the loser pays the arbitrator, but they went to the state and lobbied and said, give us some time in between there to try to settle these because they were paying out a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll settle with you in between that. Right. Good, good. And for those... Uh, can we expect this to continue to happen in the Houston real estate market and surrounding areas where we we're getting on the average? I think the the uh, uh, survey indicated 25 percent, but then there are some extremes like I have seen. <laughs> yes. So the market sort of slowed down in the sense of the uh, home buyers putting in offers above ask. So I think we should probably see it slow down just a little bit in the next appraisal year, but for right now it's up to 25% above, you know, the last year's value. And let's talk about assessed value and market value. Right. That's so tell us the difference and why, why is it important? Okay, assessed value is what you pay taxes on. The market value is what they're saying your property is worth. Now here's something that she was, I was just getting ready to, Pretty soon, the market has slowed down, but if your market value right now is 200000 over your appraise, your market value next year probably will stay the same, but you'll get that 10% hit on your appraise until they're going to finally 
yeah. meet catch up. them back up. That's right. That's something you don't want to see. <laughs> that, that's right. And, and it's coming. It's coming. Thank you guys for joining us here on the yeah, Factor yeah. on Simpson for that valuable information. And really quick, who should we look for if we want to challenge this and fight this? The, your title. What would what we, what, what we call you? You just call me Chris Compton, property tax consultant. You can reach me at Compton. So a tax so, consultant. Yes, property okay. tax consultant. Property tax consultant. That's All right. Correct. Thank yeah. you guys for joining us here on the Factor.